What's up, sterile processing universe and clean freaks around the globe? This is Hank Balch here, broadcasting live from the world headquarters of Beyond Clean here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we have got a discussion for you today, live discussions. Let me just stop right here. I'm not even going to get into the intro or anything yet to say we are live, which means we want to hear from you throughout this discussion. If you have any aha moments or if you have any disagreements or specifically if you have any questions, say, hey, you said this and you did it this way, but how do I do that in my facility or can I do it this way and it actually work as well? Anything that you want to ask or contribute to this conversation, uh, do so in the comment section. If you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn or YouTube and even Twitter, I think we're streaming live on Twitter as well. Um, as usual, we love to know where you're tuning in from. So drop your town, city, country, if you're tuning in from overseas in the comments. And uh, especially today, it's important that you're tuning in live. If you're watching this after the fact, it's okay. We still love you. There's going to be a lot of great conversation. But for everybody tuning in live, we're going to be doing uh, three exciting giveaways, three different giveaways. We're not going to be giving away the same thing, but we're going to be doing three giveaways throughout the hour. So uh, hang in there with us, listen to the conversation, and be ready uh, quick to pull the trigger on the keyboard and put your name in for some of these giveaways that will be given away live in the show. So as you probably know, if you clicked play on this video or on this live stream, we're talking about increasing salaries and increasing salaries by a pretty big percentage. This is not the two, three, five percent that everybody gets every year, hopefully. <laughs> this is not even the 10 and 20 percent salaries that you may get in a typical promotion. We're talking big, big numbers, big percentage growth in a short amount of time, which is probably what got your attention. And frankly, that's what got my attention. If you tuned in to anything that we've done on Beyond Clean over the past five years, you know we are massive advocates for compensation for sterile processing professionals and not just uh, general compensation, but more compensation. How do we raise the wage to pay our technicians out there fighting dirty every day what they deserve for the critical complex job that they're doing to keep our patients safe around the globe? So we are huge fans. When I saw these kind of stories and conversations pop up, I said, okay, let's bring these guys in, start the conversation publicly, and hopefully encourage a lot of you techs out there to duplicate their success. And if you're a department manager or director, hopefully to reorient the way you think about compensating and recruiting and retaining your high quality technicians. So uh, thank you for spending a couple of moments with us on this Thursday. And I will uh, see you in the comment section. I already see some comments here coming through. Let's give a shout out to some folks here. Stacy, what's up? Good morning. Okay, so we, I guess we're all morning right now from the East Coast out West. Uh, hey, I, I see we got some PA representation from Ken. What's up, Ken? The president of the Keystone Chapter for Sterile Processing. Hey, hello, Texas. Anna, what's happening? Good to see you. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so Jennifer, I, I don't get this, uh, but she says, uh, Ope or OP, I don't know, from Wisconsin. But it's good to see you, Wisconsin. Thank you very much. And John Williams from Columbus, Georgia says, hello. Um, and yeah, thank you all for tuning in. I see a lot of LinkedIn representation, but I know we got some folks tuning in from Facebook and YouTube as well. So um, please, along the way, as you're jumping in, just let us know who you are, where you're from. Okay, with that, uh, let's bring in our panelists. You didn't tune in to hear me talk for an hour. You tuned in to hear it straight from the source. And uh, we'll bring in Jardin Carlton and Matthew Richardson. Hey, guys, welcome Hi. to the show. Hello. So let's start with uh, uh, some brief introductions, just who you are, where you work, and then I'll get into some specifics to kind of set the stage for our conversation today about compensation. Jardin, can you get us started? Sure. I am Jardan Carlton, and I work as an education and quality assurance manager in Rochester, New York. 
Beautiful. Awesome. Welcome. And Matthew, who are you and yeah. what do you do? Yes, I am Matthew Richardson. I work as a supervisor here in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Awesome, guys. And we got more folks jumping in here. Alabama. We saw earlier Paula's tuning in. Uh, got Marsha from Toledo, Oregon. Awesome. And we got Ophi. I don't know where he's tuning in from. This guy's all over the place. But I heard through the grapevine that he may be coming to Pennsylvania. So that's uh, kind of exciting there. Uh, check out Charlie Berens. Okay. Very cool. Uh, hey, Frank Daniels. Hey, Frank. If you're not familiar with Frank, he did a terrific session in one of our conferences in 2021 about high level disinfection, um, a huge feedback on that presentation. Always good to see you, Frank. And then I'll throw in uh, w- one more here before we get to some questions. Felicia from New York. Hey, there you go, Jordan. Got some fellow New Yorkers. Yeah. <laughs> my, ac- my New York accent sounds like a Texan I'm trying to do a New York accent. So I'm not going to do that again uh, to spare everyone. Okay. Let's get some some questions here. <clears throat> and I want to start with you, Matthew. So in the progress of this conversation has happens uh, naturally through the organic networking that happens in our industry. I just happened to talk to Matthew over the last couple of years and uh, have kind of been attuned, you know, to your career growth and, and a little bit of your background. And it's really interesting in seeing you you know, move so quickly from off the streets uh, to where you are today. But the question that I want to give to you and then I'll over to Jardine is what brought you in? Like, what was that kind of catalyst, excuse, opportunity that uh, that made you decide between all the careers in the world <laughs> to start doing this one? Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think my story is similar to a lot of people um, by happenstance. I didn't even know sterile processing existed. So it was uh, the beginning of the pandemic and I was, I was let go from the the job that I was currently working at and thought to myself, I have a family at home. I don't want to be let go again (laughs) as a result of something like this. And so I, I geared my sights back towards healthcare, having had experience in it before. Um, and it just so happened that a, a friend of mine who, who was a health care recruiter in another location saw a job posting in mine and, and sent it to me and said, knowing you, knowing your, your skill set and personality, I think this would be a great career path for you. And she sent it to me and I was like, well, great. I need a job. So I applied. <laughs> okay, we got a fellow Louisville folk, you know, tuning in here from the VA. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Right. So what about your personality? Like, I know this is, this is maybe hard uh, uh, for you to speak to from the outside, you know, looking in, but like, was it attention to detail? Was it kind of nerdiness about, you know, data? Like what was it yeah. that that recruiter saw in you? Yeah. So she, she described it um, uh, in a very HR recruiter like way of uh, detail oriented and, um, uh, very conscientious about the details that are that are present, and and a former leader of mine describes it as neuroticism. Can't rest until it's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I love it. So I think we all have a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Jordan? Like, what brought you into sterile processing originally? Uh, so originally, what brought me in? Um, I was working at a hospital as. Um, in kind of a biohazardous um, area. So I was the guy that was responsible for collecting needle boxes from room to room. And so um, I knew of a technical vocational school in my area and they offered sterile processing. It was a very new program. And I figured just the transfer from what I was currently doing over into that program will probably go pretty well. And it did. Hmm. So the needles, like that's kind of... Uh, there's roles I see like with the sharps removals and like the, um, like the instrument recycling, that was kind of the role that you were in. Great. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, before we get going too much further, I think, you know, for the folks that are, 
here with us early, I want to give a little reward. Okay, so we're going to do our first giveaway here. And uh, the giveaway is actually going to be this baby right here, one of the new sterile processing word puzzle books. Now, what's interesting, I know it's kind of hard to see on this, but you see that little five CEs right here? Uh, the first um, book in the sterile processing industry that had puzzles that was approved for CE content. So I had uh, about a year or two before published the first ever CE approved book. That was the frontline book through the ultra clean systems team. Uh, but this puzzle book was the first puzzle book ever in the industry and is definitely the first puzzle book that was approved for CEs. So I'm going to give away, you know, five CEs <laughs> to the first person in the comment section that uh, types the words beyond clean puzzle book. All right. So the first person who can get that typed, I will sign this book which means it will decrease in value after I sign it, but I'll sign the book and then I'll get it in the mail to you. So the first person says beyond clean puzzle book in the comment section. And um, I, I want to ask one more kind of question here to, to set the tone, I guess, for um, what the, um, context was, you know, for this career growth, because I want to spend the majority of your time you're talking about the money piece. Like everybody's like, okay, yeah, you know, it got in Hank, they're working sterile processing, whoop de doo so are we. Like, how do they increase their salary so much? That's what they're here for. But I got to ask one more question before we get there. Um, in the industry and role itself, because this plays into this perception in healthcare about who we are in sterile processing and because of that, what we're worth. So what kind of misconceptions? I'm going to start with you first, Jordan. In the industry are just like, can you as a person, like what misconceptions or assumptions did you have about what was happening in that sterile processing department? Uh before you took your first job there? Um, so to be perfectly honest, I didn't have any um, assumptions whatsoever because I had never stepped foot in sterile processing. Um, and so all I had really accessible to me was check book knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, during that time, even of going to the technical school, we weren't even allowed clinical hours. So we never stepped foot in and we just had as much as we could take of book knowledge. And that was the extent of it. Okay. Okay, great. So you really started from a, a blank slate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. What about you, Matthew? Like when you first heard the term sterile processing, what did you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first thing I did is start researching it and, and then pulling up some, some YouTube videos and, and Googling it. And, and what I kept finding was was people in these hairnets I had never seen before holding <laughs> instruments and, 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 and staring at them. Uh, so my, my misconception was I was, I was a bit afraid that when I got into it, I was going to be incredibly bored staring mm -hmm. at instruments and weird hairnets all day. And so uh, my misconception was that I, um, I thought it was going to be incredibly boring. And what I quickly found is that it's actually incredibly exciting and and vary so much from day to day in the midst of the standardized processes that that mm. each new day provides a lot of excitement yeah well uh speaking of excitement perfect segue and setup here we do have a winner for the first giveaway of this live stream and it is felicia patterson uh tuning in from the youtube channel so uh congrats felicia this is coming your way Tons of puzzles, a couple of great articles in here. Like I said, all CE approved. And what's unique about this book is um, it has QR codes on each of the puzzles that actually take you directly to the podcast that we pulled these puzzles from. So it's, uh, it's a great example of a multimedia book. Like we use that phrase a lot, you know, multimedia, meaning different types of media. But we don't do it a lot in our industry. So that was a real... Uh, a real big focus for us and the publisher of this book, you know, to work together and say, hey, let's not just do a typical book. Let's do something 
one step better. So congratulations, Felicia. And uh, thank you, everybody else, because I saw a lot of other comments, you know, come in YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn for the Beyond Clean Puzzle book. Uh, but hang out, because we're going to have two other chances to win something else. That's the only book that we're giving away today, but there will be more. And um, actually, I think both of the giveaways for the rest of the show are going to be more expensive. Uh, okay, so hang out there with us. Um, we did get a couple of other shout outs here that I want to represent. Uh, another one from NYC and the tri-state area. And I've seen a couple of comments um, on LinkedIn. So if you're having issues, get on LinkedIn. Like It looks like some people are able to view it and others may be having some issues. But it, if you are having issues on LinkedIn, jump over to our YouTube page or onto the Beyond Clean Facebook page, and they're both live streaming there as well. Um, all right, so let's get uh, to the nitty gritty or to the fun part, I guess. Um, and we're going to talk about strategy or like a little bit about you know philosophy. You know, maybe two. And so this question, uh, I'll start with you first, Matthew. Mm -hmm. You get your first job. The recruiter introduces you this concept. You do all the research. You do the application. You get the interview. You get the job. You walk in. And I think all of us kind of have that deer in the headlights. Like, oh, my goodness. Like thousands of instruments, all these processes. Like you're going to put me in that room with blood and like all kinds of infectious agents and you want me to stay in there for eight hours and there's going to be like steam and splash and everything like what did i sign up for right so um in the midst of just navigating the job um you don't end up where you have in less than two years with an 89 percent increase in salary without thinking very early on about how you're going to navigate that. So kind of walk me through that timeline from job application and now how do I increase it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, as an aside, I did feel that. I, I considered quitting a lot the first two weeks I started at getting into the job, <laughs> so seeing all the blood and thought, what did I sign myself up for? Yeah, um, thank you for but, your honesty there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure the first month they, my leaders must have talked about putting me on a performance improvement plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I, I did um, begin thinking about that very early on. In, in fact, the, the structure that I was told about when I first began was that you get one pay rate uh, as you're initially coming in and that you get a second pay rate once you become certified. So I actually started thinking about that before I ever even started, um, just, just from the moment of hire. Um, I was already planning towards that and, and figuring out how to get the materials to begin studying that. And, and once I got in, once, once I, um, there, there was actually, actually kind of a, a, a delay. I, I got that in four months, um, and I was kind of thinking, okay, I'll, I'll ride my time out. Uh, now that I've got this, I'll kind of work on as I go progressively. And, and actually a leader stepped in and said, Hey, I, I think you've got a huge skill set. I think you should keep pushing towards these certifications. And for whatever it was that that leader coming along saying that it, it turned the switch on that, um, that got a lock box put around it. And then the key incinerated, and never to turn the switch off again. And so after that, it was just certification, certification, certification. And so my plan from from month four was that um, when the opportunity opened up, I wanted to have every certification that our industry offers so that when an opportunity for a lead tech, a QA, anything like that opens up, I, I have a, a lot of um, credentials mixed with performance to say, hey, I think I'd be a good fit for this role. So about month four, I started really pressing the gas on that. I got a question for the audience uh, tuning in. I'm kind of curious about this, but you brought up a theme that I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot, you know, for the rest of the hour. And it's the, the link between the industry certifications 
in that compensation ladder, right? And so I'm curious, you know, for folks tuning in, is that where you see the best uh, plan of attack in your own career? Tara, have you seen the most success in climbing your own career ladder uh, through those certifications? So let me know what you think in the comment. You know, you can say, yeah, Hank, it's all about certification equals compensation. Or if you disagree or, or have other experience, I'd love to know that too. Um, I happen to probably be a little more in the agnostic camp uh, in terms of it, is that a wide scale strategy for the whole industry? Uh, but I will say uh, in my own experience, Matthew, that that was my strategy too, right? <laughs> and so like, uh, is it work for everybody? Is it the plan for everybody? I, I'm not convinced of that yet, but it did work for me. And obviously, because we're going to talk about some more, it has worked for you. <laughs> so I'm curious to see what everyone else thinks. Um uh, on your side, Jordan, so, you know, you're a little different. Like Matthew literally has less than two years experience in the industry. Is that right, Matthew? That is correct. Yeah. yeah so when is your two year anniversary? Uh, July. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're like quite a bit back. It's not like, you know, next week you're going to be two years. Like we still got a couple of months. Now, Jordan, like you've been in the industry for a lot longer, uh, but as we scooped you up on LinkedIn this week, you have also increased your salary a substantial percentage, you know, so you can start wherever you want, you know, you can start at the very beginning of your career or you can start like over the last couple of years when you're like, okay, now I'm, now I'm going to go for it. But just kind of tell us what that thought process was when you said, okay, it's time. Um, so what happened with me is I, because I was in class, I had just made up in my mind during class that what, you know, I was going to go at this industry full force. Um, and for me, I was just thinking of, I'm going to completely dominate whatever I'm about to get into. Um, I didn't know what that would look like necessarily, but I did have a very strong work ethic. I was no stranger to work. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that, um, that could kind of carry me. Um, and so when I, got into my first interview, they kind of opened my eye to a niche. Um, so during my first interview, she took me to a, a HLD room, high level disinfection room. And she told me about the issues that, you know, the industry was having with endoscope reprocessing. And mm -hmm. so being that I live in New York state, I said to myself, New York State loves to capitalize on, uh, you know, niche information or, you know, make certifications. And so just like they made a certification for sterile processing, they'll surely make one for endoscopes. And so I said, well, if I come here and I hurry up and I get the endoscope certification, when they make that change, then I can demand my own dollar amount because I'm the only person probably in this whole facility that I have it <laughs> in this department. I love it. Um, and to my surprise, that never happened. Even to this day, New York State has still not mandated that you have to have it. Wow. Um, so what ended up happening was um, I, 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 so I came in with that, that hunger and thirst to be um, in leadership or to stand out. And so um, every opportunity I could, I just made sure that I always applied myself. So when they needed a weekend person, um, I came in and I, I, you know, volunteered for that. And I was very new to the department, but um, just my zeal alone, it, that opened doors for me. And so I was given um, the opportunity to do that. And that was primarily like you're by yourself kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always kind of been a person that if you leave me in a room long enough, I'm going to make that room adapt to what's going to work for me. And so even though I didn't know everything at the time, uh, my department's manager is pretty secure in the fact that if we leave him on the weekend, everything's going to be all right. We won't mm -hmm. get phone calls. And so um, I, I made that situation work. And then um, the big thing for me is that um, I, I knew that certification mattered, but I also knew that my previous experiences also mattered. And um, if anything I can offer people is figure out how to make the correlation between your previous work history or even just your previous history and, and kind of make that work in the industry that you're now in. I mm -hmm. come from um, the OPWDD population, people with developmental disabilities. And so I knew that if I could teach them in a paraprofessional setting, and I knew that if I could work as a habilitator, um, 
in a residential setting that whoever I was put in front of, I probably will be able to convey the information that needed to be conveyed to them, no matter what their background was. Mother. And so given the opportunity to be a preceptor or, or when that position became available, I jumped at it and I used that background of me teaching people with developmental disabilities to my advantage. Hey, I can teach whoever you bring in here, no matter what their cultural differences are, beliefs, you know, language barrier. I got it. Just put me in there. And, um, <laughs> yeah, they put me, me in, coach. <laughs> yeah, put me in. <laughs> yeah, well, that piece about uh, tying in your previous work experience. Now, both of you guys highlighted something critical you know like we didn't i don't think either one of you all really came out and said it but it was that that eye toward the edge like how can i get the edge and it's you know kind of a competitive spirit probably that's somewhere deep in there uh, but it's also um it it ties in a work ethic and that's something that you said jardin is even with the certifications uh, to, let's say like I saw a lot of comments here. There's like, yeah, you know, that's kind of the model that I use. I connect trying to get more certifications with, uh, increased compensation, but what you can't do. And I don't think anyone has seen work. And this is probably where some of the disappointment is out there. You can't not have, you cannot have a poor work ethic, get all of the certifications and expect people to throw money at you. Right that is not going to work. Right. Uh, and likewise, and I think we've all probably seen e e examples of this, even without credentials sometimes, if you've got a great work ethic, like you're the guy or the gal that shows up when it's kind of flurrying outside with snow and everybody else is like, oh, you know, the streets are slick. Can't get in today, you know. But you're the one that is always there, always dependable. And when the doorbell rings or when the phone call rings, you're not the one running the other way. You're actually running toward the phone or toward the door. You know, that in the eyes of a leader is like, OK, if we get any opportunities to promote anytime soon, you know, that's when you're rising to the top. And that was kind of that story that you shared um, like about the high level of disinfection is like you saw this need and you said, I want to be the person who can can solve that problem or can be a dependable solution in that need. So I think that it, it is a fantastic point. And I kind of got off uh, of the rabbit trail that I was trying to go on because the other thing that I wanted to say is um, in your resume, and I, I've done a couple of videos about this before, the the best resumes I have ever seen, I've seen this a couple of times, are people who have no healthcare background whatsoever, nothing to do with surgical instruments, nothing to do with a hospital, but they come in with a resume and they did what Matthew did, is they did some research, they watched some videos, they asked some people, and they created a resume that that spoke to the the mindset and the commitment of our job without even really knowing specifically what the job was. And the best example of that that I had was this lady um, who had been working in a daycare setting, you know, like what does that have to do with serial processing? Um, and in her resume and in her interview, you know, it was conversations about, I had responsibility for disinfecting all the toys and all the tabletops every day after, you know, quiet time, after nap time. I had responsibility, you know, from the CDC and from these other governmental agencies that we had to document uh, all the food allergies and everything else. And like all of these things kept uh, doing alarm bells, you know, say, oh, that's not exactly what we do, but that's the reason that we do mm -hmm. it. And that's how we do it. And man, by the end of that resume and by the interview, I was like, yeah, sold. Like, I don't. I don't care, you know, what company you used to work for, like you're going to work here now because you get what we're trying to do and the reasons behind it. So um, I, I really identify it like you applied like your previous work experience on the training side of things. But I that's a huge gold star for um, competitively interviewing and building those resumes, I think. OK, let me uh, pause there recognize some conversations that are going on in a comment section and get ready for a giveaway. So if you're tuning in live, 
dust off your keyboard, get the coffee out of the way. Please don't spill your coffee when you rush to win this next giveaway. Um, but let's give a shout out here. Uh, we got some feedback from Harry Mullen on the work ethic. He, he totally agrees, and I'm not surprised that Harry agrees with this, but work ethic is a must. Amen there, Harry. Um, tuning in from sunny Florida, Brandon, Florida, I increased my salary by never turning down a learning opportunity. And that has come up a lot, Stacy. That's a great point. And she only has a CRCST. That's it. That's another interesting point. So really thank you for sharing that there, Stacy, because I think it's important, uh, it's important experiential notes that just maxing out the credentials, which is what some of us have done is not the only way. Um, Got another comment here from Ken Batten showing up is what it's all about. That makes a big difference. Now, Ken is a fellow educator. So, you know, spoke like a true educator. Yeah, come guys, because if you're not here, you're not getting the education. You're not getting the in services every single day that you're not there, that you're supposed to be there. It's really, really difficult. Or if you are there, be mentally there, not somewhere else. All right, a couple more here. Got a shout out from Alessandra. Awesome conversation. Thank you very much from a fellow podcaster. They're doing great work over there at the Process Podcast and Show. So if you haven't checked them out, go check them out. In addition to consuming all the Beyond Clean content as well. Um, and it looks like we've got a couple more issues maybe with LinkedIn. So again, if you're tuning in on LinkedIn, having issues, go over to the YouTube feed and the Facebook feed. I wish I could control everything on LinkedIn, but alas, I can't. Okay. Are we ready for the next giveaway? Yeah, we're ready for the next giveaway. So the next giveaway, oh, let me get this comment here. Uh, mm -hmm. Boom. Okay. The next giveaway is right... Where, where am I pointing? Right there. <laughs> or actually, it's right here. This is my sterile processing shirt. We're going to give away one of these shirts. Um, and if you're tuning in live, what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, type a couple of words in the comment section. And the uh, first folks that type in the words, I will get your mailing address after the fact. And we will ship you direct. This is my sterile processing shirt. And let me see if I can get this off and if y'all can see it. I don't think you're supposed to do this on live feed, but I'm going to turn my back here. Uh, yeah, it's a little hard. It's a little hard to see, but we got some custom artwork on this. This pretty freaking sweet. It comes from the Beyond Clean artwork series that we did about a year and a half ago. And the vision for artwork series is, hey, where is the cool artwork that represents who we are as an industry and what we do like where is the illustration and the graphics out there uh, apart from the boring you know stock images that all of us can look at and say that person's never worked a day in sterile processing like we don't have purple gloves and you know they're not using that kind of thing at decontam this is real like, these come from real photos in real departments of real people that that we've got custom illustrated and that's what you're going to get on this t-shirt. So I'm going to give away one of these t-shirts and I'm going to give away one of these t-shirts to the first person in the comment section that says beyond clean artwork. Okay. Beyond clean artwork. That's what you need to put in the comment section. And the first one of those I see come across from any of the platforms, you're going to take home one of these shirts and, uh, as a reward for tuning in and learning how to increase your salary. That's a win-win. We got another win coming up later. Okay, Harry Mullen. Boom. Harry, oh, wait. I'm sorry, Harry. <laughs> I spoke too soon. And I beat you to the punch. Okay. And I got a record. I took a screenshot, you know, so I'm not, not lying to you. Anna come in by like a millisecond before you. So congrats, Anna Castillo Gutierrez. Thank you for tuning in from Texas. And you're going to get one of these shirts. And I want to see you wearing it in San Antonio at the HSPA conference here in April. Okay, back to it. We are going to be talking about the plan. And I, I told you guys before we got on the show, you know, this is the part that I want to focus the most on. 
everything else kind of background, you know, set up the why and everything else. But this is like, how did you do it? What was the practical plan? What did it look like? And this is an important kind of secondary question. Um, how's it work the way that you expect it? So I think we all have plans. Like we want to be, you know, millionaires before we're 30. Well, I didn't make it. Maybe before I'm 40, <laughs> but we'll see. But um, we all have a plan. We know the plans don't go according to plan because we don't control the whole process. Uh, let me start with you, Matthew, on this uh, plan. In, in that month four, because you said it was really month four. It was that leader who's like, hey, you, you, you've got potential. You should pursue these credentials. What um, from there until now was that kind of strategy for you? And how did you walk through it? And what surprised you along the way? Yeah, yeah. And I think this uh, this ties a lot into the last discussion of kind of certification and performance. What does it? I think it's a both and. The certification gives you the ammunition for the performance. Um, but so, yeah, the, my initial plan jumping in was I, I want to, this is such an incredibly complex industry. I want to become an expert in the daily processes so that I can then apply my work ethic to that. And so the, the plan year one uh, was only, I want to master my job description so that I can then begin to talk with leaders, begin to apply for these, at the time, internal positions of, of leadership. And, and so I, um, I began to, to do that, to, to work towards that. So some of the things I did is twofold, becoming a, an, an expert in the material and being able to show that. People, people talk about wages a lot and they say, hey, you really need to know your worth. And for me, I'm like, no, this is business. You need to show your worth. And so you need to have those credentials and that performance that matches that internal desire of pay increase. And so that was my plan. I, I got the certifications. The, the second part was performance. I, what, what is the, how many, how many instruments do you want to see? You want to see 800? Okay, I'll give you a thousand and then I'm going to solve a couple problems before they ever arrive at your desk. And so an example of that, I was uh, an instrument coordinator um, um, mentioned offhand. He said, Hey, I've got all these lead hands. We were walking through his office and he's like, yeah, I've got all these lead hands. I, I don't really know what to do with them, so they're just there for the now. And then we went on our back, uh, back about our task, and, and I put that as a sticky note. Okay, that's, that's probably an EPA thing. I contacted the EPA outside of work, figured out how we dispose of them, gave them the printed email, said, here's how you dispose of those. You can actually do it today. Here's how. And so the, my plan involved, how do I take this knowledge and then contribute to the day-to-day -day organizational goals that we have. I don't, I don't care what everyone else is meeting. What I care about is what I'm going to meet here. And when I say I don't care, I mean like I'm not going to let that deter me from from doing above and beyond, even if it means taking an additional load. And so my plan was always make myself indispensable to my leadership. And their priority is always my priority. I don't care what it is. They have a reason for it. If it's their priority, it's mine. And then expertise in the field. And so that, that was my plan. My, my initial plan was I, I thought the, the credentials could get me there. And actually, it was the performance. It was, it was going to a leader who knew how I performed, who said, I trust you in this leadership role. In fact, I was I talked to a director at, at another organization that I worked in. I said, I've got all these credentials. I think I'm ready for this leadership role. And, and he actually said, well, anyone can pass a test. Um, so what we want to see is we want to see the year's experience. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but someone else said, I am super glad for, for that, that knowledge you have, and I trust you to perform with it. And so it was that mm -hmm. both and approach. And, and so... Wow. It, did, it didn't always work as, as I planned, but um, uh, eventually it, things aligned the right way. So. so you threw out, 
a lot there, Matthew, and I want to uh, try to dig into some of that. No, that's great. That's great. That's what this is all about. You know, but I want to dig in because there's a lot of points that I was shaking my head, like Jordan was shaking his head. We got some commenters here, you know, quoting you. And uh, in the quote, I think it's Alessandra here who uh, actually highlighted the one that I was saying it too. It's like, you bust out with yeah. this is business. And that's like when me and Jordan were like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um and, you know, that difference between knowing your worth and showing your worth. And it, it really, really is about that that leadership piece. And I want to kind of tie in maybe to that. Then, Jardin, like I'll let you comment, you know, a little bit about what Matthew went through. And then we can talk about your story, too. Um, it's that in all of business, you know, but sterile processing is no different we kind of have this thing of nobody wants to be the the brown noser to the boss. Like we don't want any kiss ups, you know, to the boss. And that's just it. But, you know, for good reason, like you don't want to play favorites or try to become a favorite, you know, teacher's pet or whatever. Like we learned that in school, but that's not what you're saying. What you're saying is if, if there's someone in charge of the department, they're in charge for a reason, you know, better or worse, if they have strengths or weaknesses or whatever, but they are in charge and they have expectations. And if you want to grow as quickly as you can, you need to be finding out what are those expectations and how can I exceed them? That's just, that's just good work. That's not brown nosing. That's not sucking up. <laughs> and I think the big difference is it goes back to work ethic, which is what we've been talking about. If you're sucking up, not working hard, and trying to become the favorite without earning it, then yeah, that's a problem. But if you're working hard, going above and beyond, not only helping your boss accomplish their goals, but helping the whole department accomplish their goals, then you, you're really in that scenario that everybody wins, but especially you, because you're the one putting out that extra effort and that extra mile. So Jardin, in your experience, like with leaderships and kind of navigating that piece of the puzzle, have you seen that or do you have any other kind of insights to add about that? Um, I, I definitely have seen this. Um, I think that um, his approach was, was extremely correct. You have to really get a good understanding of who your leadership is and that requires time so you have to get you know close to that individual understand who they are what it is they expect understand the organization's expectations and then you know you can demonstrate and execute those things and not only that you have to also be a team player um, one of the things that I, I developed earlier on, and this was prior to sterile processing, but I've always been the unofficial leader. Um, and so when people know that they can come to you as a source of leadership outside of the actual leader, then when the opportunity is given for you to be the actual leader, those people will then speak up and champion you and say, select this person because I he knows everything. I go to him all the time. And so you become, you know, I'm sure Matt, his experiences, you become the source of, you know, um, encouragement, the source of information, the source of knowledge for that whole department. And it just exemplifies your work ethic. It exemplifies why you deserve these positions. Um, and so it, it is really important that you do not suck up to, but that you do kind of um, take mentorship from your departmental leaders. Hmm. And if you don't have a good leader, go find a good leader. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I know like that's something, Matthew, like you haven't really talked a lot about, you know, but like you did that. Um, yeah. and, and not saying that you left bad leaders, you know, but like you went to different leaders and that mm -hmm. that especially in this job market is an option that's available to everyone. If you're not getting that response, if you're not able to please the leader that's above you, which that is that's potential. Like there's leaders out there who no matter what you do, they're not going to be happy. They're going to constantly asking for more and more and more. And that's just the story. Um, I want to get your experience here with the plan, Jardin. So, um, and again, if you can kind of uh, contrast a little bit from the beginning of the career, which is where Matthew is, you know, for kind of this mid career spike, you know, kind of like what Harry Mullen said, like he was 20 years in before he was like, okay, now I want to go make some money. Like I'm tired of this, just, you know, 1%, 2%, et cetera. Like what was that plan when it clicked for you and has it worked the way that you expected? Um, 
For me, the plan has definitely uh, worked the way that I expected, but there were some hiccups. Um, yeah. And so um, for me, I, I get so excited about the hiccups because they taught me so much. Amen. Um, so um, in the very beginning, I, I, let me say what I actually did do. Um, mm -hmm. I won't talk about numbers, but what I did was I came into industry in 2017 as a tech one uh, entry level tech. And by the end of 2018, I was a tech four uh, actual educating supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, and so what what happened was during that time, I did hear a few no's and um when I heard those no's, instead of getting discouraged, I continued to work. I continued to work just as hard um, and because I knew my opportunity would come. Don't ask me how I knew, but I knew. Uh, and so I, I just stuck with working. I stuck with developing. I stuck with gaining knowledge. I did go and get that flexible endoscope uh, certification. And at the time, Flexible endoscope reprocessing was something that nobody wanted to take ownership of in our department. And I had made a conscious decision. Nothing in this department is going to defeat me. Any area you put me in, I want to have an answer and a result for being in that area. And so I made sure um, I learned that. But when I was told no um, in regards to being an educator the very first time, um, it gave me a greater opportunity to watch the person who did get that opportunity. And as I watched that person, it made me develop more of what to do and what not to do when it was my turn. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity because if I had allowed it to break me, I would have walked away in shame and probably relaxed and just not been consistent towards my plan. But because I allowed that to be an opportunity to learn from, um, it taught me tremendously. I thought I learned a lot from the previous educator, but this new woman that had joined the team, I learned a lot by watching her of what she was doing correctly, what she could have improved on. And so when it was now my opportunity, um, I was just, it was kind of like I was a brand new entity in the department. Nobody had ever seen this level of, of ingenuity. Nobody ever seen anyone think outside of the box the way I was. And it was because of all of my experience growing up through the ranks of one, two, three, four. And so I took all of that and I brought that to being the educator at that time. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, if I can offer anything, is that sometimes hearing no is not necessarily a deterrent. Um, while I was preparing for this, I wrote something and, and it was that um, a slow cooked meal is appreciated just as much as raw sushi. Nobody turns down a slow cooked meal because they know the preparation and time that's associated with making it as great as it is. Mm. But also we appreciate raw sushi. You know, sushi is prepared literally in minutes. Um, but there you eat you appreciate those dishes equally some people appreciate the one that took more time and preparation even more so just because you're told no don't get discouraged and look at that as a deterrent but just take this as an opportunity to say i'm cooking slow but i'm still getting when when i get finished everybody will love me <laughs> so um you know you're making me experience. hungry over here <laughs> um well you know my background yeah. is in culinary arts I did not know that. So, you know, yeah. you and Jesse Lopez need to connect. And when we launch this Beyond Clean HGTV, you know, cooking channel, uh, it's going to happen, man, because that connection. I, I think you were the one that uh, brought the food truck in, right? Right. For, uh, was that sterile processing week? Yeah. It was. Great. Yeah. I'd love to do a whole interview. Like, I don't want to get sidetracked here, but I'd love to do a whole interview on the impact of food on our sterile processing departments because I get a bad oh rap. God. Like, I wrote an article out here that said, you know, pizza parties are bad. And, like, you know, people kind of jump on me. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, why do you hate food? And I was like, no, I don't hate food. I specifically say the first sentence of the article, like, I will push grandma out of the way for some. Uh, <laughs> There was a like buffalo chicken pizza, right? You know, like I'm all about that. But what I don't like is only pizza as the only way that we recognize our team. So anyways, I get a bad rap for that, but I actually do like food. I appreciate food. And I think there's power in food in the right ways. And that analogy, you know, hit home because I love me some sushi and also <laughs> like some jambalaya, which takes a while. So yeah. uh, great point. Okay. We're running out of time, guys. We got 10 minutes left. 
and we got uh, two topics left and I got one giveaway left. So let me go ahead and get the giveaway out of the way and then we'll jump into the last two topics. And um, also, just so everyone knows, if you've got any specific questions, don't wait till the end. Go ahead and throw those questions out for these guys and I will skip over the questions I've got and I'll ask some of the audience questions too, just so y'all can get those answered. Uh, both of these gentlemen are on LinkedIn, so you can track them down, just look them up, put their name and ask them any questions that you didn't get to ask or you didn't want to ask publicly and they will definitely hook you up. Okay. Um, so our last giveaway, let me click all these little buttons here, is going to be Drum roll, please. Bum, 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 bum. The uh, a Beyond Clean micro credential scholarship. So uh, this is big. This is the most expensive giveaway of the show. We started with like under nine bucks. I think my book is like eight something on Amazon right now, worth five CES. And we did this awesome T-shirt that's I don't know, maybe 15, 16 bucks. Um, but this sterile processing micro credential is 99 bucks through CCI. And the great thing about this micro credential for everyone like you guys and me who have maxed out all the available certifications out there is this is the next step. Like, what do you do if you're one of, you know, 20, 30, or I don't even know, hundreds and hundreds of folks around the country now who've got all of there are four certifications or three or four certifications through CBSPD, the golden crown, I think they call it. I wanted to call it the grand slam, but <laughs> no one listened to me. Um, but what do you do? The answer is you go deeper because all these certifications, what folks forget is those are entry level on each of those categories. It's like, what's the least that you need to know to do this job safely? What micro credentials do and what this micro credential does is take folks deep into these specific categories. And this one's all about cross contamination. So we're going to give this away right now to uh, the first person. So if you've already registered for it, don't do this giveaway. <laughs> okay. There's only for folks who are interested in getting a scholarship and um, have the time to commit to it. All right. So you're looking at uh, 10, 12, 15 hours to have working time, but it's all at your own pace. And uh, if you don't know, this is approved for 10 CEs through both ISHM or HSPA and CBSPD. So 10 CEs and this micro credential given away right now to the first person who I see comment in the comment section on any of the live feeds, the words beyond clean cross contamination. Beyond clean cross contamination. The, the first one to drop it in there gets this. Okay, I took up way too much time on that. So we'll see who wins that in the comment section. But let me ask, um, and let me make sure that I didn't miss any questions here. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's talk about, and let me get this out of the way new technicians. You know, I know we got folks who are tuning in like a, I, I know I can travel, you know, maybe sometime down the road, make a lot of money. But if I want to stay, if I have to stay for whatever reason, how do I experience the same growth? Uh, I want to start with you, Jordan. Like, give us just like real succinct, you know, a couple of minutes. What would you say and encourage those folks out there tuning in to do what you've done in their own careers? I would encourage you to learn as much as possible at those in-services, really ask in-depth questions, take as much as you can in from in-services, but also this is paramount, get a per diem job at another facility. Every facility offers unique niches. And so when I first got into the field, I had two jobs at totally two different hospitals. Even and I kept those jobs, even as, even as a supervising educator, I still was a per diem staff as a technician at another hospital, just because the differences was paramount between the two. One had technology, the other didn't. I wanted to know for sure I could work no matter where you set me at. So get that cross reference experience of different facilities, even within your own city. Awesome. Great word. What about you, Matthew? What's that couple of points, you know, big takeaway for folks who say, I want what they got? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's roughly four points. I would, I would look at the position you want 
now, today, and then begin re reverse engineering the skill set necessary to be in that position. And so that that may be certifications. I always encourage every certification you can get or any form of professional development and and begin focusing on the performance and, and those soft skills needed for that position. Um, and of course, adjust, <laughs> keep your resume cur current along the way with that. And then um, it, with, within that, forming your salary plan, of course, you have to know what it is that's competitive. And so keep your finger on the pulse of the market rate in your area so that when you're given an offer, you know, ouch, that, uh, that, that may not be, be in the market I'm used to. And so, and so learn what is key to negotiating that rate because you've, you've done the work you've developed the skill set, you got to be ready to confidently ask for the pay that is reflective of the skill set. You said four points. Did I, I heard two. Are there more? Uh, Toward you wrap all those in? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Certification. <laughs> okay. Certification. Professional development, soft skills. Mm. Um, know, know your market rate and be ready to negotiate. So, oh. so three, I just can't count. I did say them all. <laughs> okay. okay. Join the club. I'm not good at math either. Um, great insight and comment there um, on that reverse engineering piece. And I, I'm a huge fan. I think I may have written about this somewhere in um, starting today, like not when the job posts, it's, it's too late to get started and prepared when the job yeah. posts, uh, you've yeah. missed your chance. Not to say that you can't get it, you know, but if you do get it, it's because you were already prepared or preparing ahead of time. So yeah, if you're sitting out yeah. there and you're thinking, Hey, I want to have that educator's job if, and when they ever leave, well, start preparing now and do a lot of the things that both of you said on this interview, which is work hard, ask questions, go above and beyond, create expertise uh, through credentials, but also just through hands-on experience, just just golden goals and feedback you know, from both of y'all. So thank you both for uh, giving away your time today to the industry, like to complete strangers that you don't know, to help them increase their salary and sterile processing. That means a ton to me, and I know it means a ton to them. So thank you both. Absolutely. Um, a shout out to our winner, even though Spellcheck did him wrong. Um, we're going to give it to Harry Mullen. He he got uh, uh, his first comment was unclean cross contamination, but I know what he meant, even though Siri did not. So, Harry, we've got a Beyond Clean micro credential scholarship heading your way. And for everybody uh, tuning in, as I said, both Jardin and Matthew on LinkedIn, track him down, connect with them, and uh, keep this conversation going. We know one hour is not enough to communicate everything that has happened in their careers or in your career on how to keep growing. And if I've learned anything from both of these gentlemen today, it's that they're not done yet. So we're looking forward, maybe down the road, to talking again and seeing what the next 89% growth looks like and how soon do you get there. So keep on, uh, keep on keeping on, guys. And then for everyone tuning in, uh, thank you for all that you do. Every instrument, every time for patients all across the globe. We appreciate you. We're here for you at Beyond Clean. Um, and until next time, keep fighting dirty. <laughs>